Hello, my name is Steve Burgess, hypnotherapist and past life regression specialist. Uh, before I read you a section from my uh, new book, The Power of Past Life Regression, I just wanted to explain the background to past life regression. Um, I've been a hypnotherapist now for 24 years and in that time I've completed over 14,000 hypnotherapy sessions and many of those have been regression sessions. Now what we do in regression is in hypnosis we take our clients back to the emotional trauma or traumas that are connected to causing their problems. This emotional release then helps them to heal uh, and solves the problems basically. So the regression model is that any issue that we have as a human being can come from locked in feelings and emotions from the past. Um, and I'm one of the few therapists in the world who takes past life regression very, very seriously. Uh, I regress my clients back into this lifetime, but very often back into past lives, if the subconscious mind shows that we need to go there. So I don't lead them in that. The subconscious indicates the roots of the, of the problem are in a past life or several past lives and we explore the past lives. This can be very dramatic and in a lot of cases clients are uh, crying, sobbing, sometimes screaming, yelling, even writhing in order to release the problem. But they always get better uh, and as long as regression is done correctly and with the right safeguards, it's an incredibly powerful technique. Uh, I have clients over the years who have been uh, who have come with all sorts of problems from anxiety stakes and panic attacks and phobias to uh, depression to lack of confidence to skin problems to physical problems to um, sexual issues so you name it we say in regression the cause of all of our issues are coming from pa uh, past traumas um, and for me it's a very credible therapeutic discipline I'm not some sort of a woolly-minded new ager uh, who just wants to take people into past lives. This is a credible discipline and it helps people to heal from all sorts of issues. And the book, The Power of Past Life Regression, is about a lot of my clients and their historical stories in trance, the stories that they've experienced um, in past lives in order to release the problems. So I'm going to really just read uh, one of those chapters now. This is uh, Holly's story. Um, and how we worked on her depression. Holly was training to be a counsellor and she attended an evening lecture that I gave to her group of trainees on hypnotherapy. Afterwards she pulled me aside and asked if I could help her using hypnotherapy and regression therapy with her depression. I explained that if we could regress back into the negative emotions causing the depression and release them then she would get better. Um, and also, it wouldn't take lots of therapy sessions to find out if she could or couldn't be helped. She'd had counselling in the past and it hadn't helped her. Now she was taking antidepressants prescribed by her, by her GP. Now, I think Holly was impressed by my approach, or she was simply desperate to get better, so she booked in for a session. A 39-year-old nursery worker, she arrived at my office looking miserable and dejected. She explained that the depression had been with her for several years and despite trying many approaches to get well, the only thing that really helped her to stop going deeper down into desolate bleakness was the martial arts classes that she attended a couple of times each week. This obviously made sense as depression is characterised by feelings of dejection uh, and doing forceful physical action helps to break out of the feelings of misery and sadness. However, it was only acting like a sticking plaster over a gaping wound, and within a day of her martial arts class, the misery would return. In desperation, she got to her doctor with prescribed tablets. Holly settled nicely into hypnosis, and her subconscious indicated that there were five previous lives causing the depression. And not surprisingly, to me at least, all of the past lives involved death trauma and the first one was particularly poignant. When she was in trance, I asked her to tell me what she was seeing and what she was wearing. She said, I'm outside, I'm standing on a busy street and it's daytime. I'm a woman, I guess around 36 years old and I'm wearing a big long dress and a bonnet on my head. I've got posh shoes on my feet, I'm shopping. 
I go into a shop and buy some bread. I, I have a little boy with me and he stays outside. He's about six years old and called Thomas. I'm starting to feel really tense now. My chest feels heavy. I've left the shop and, and I see him lying in the road sweating. He's all limp. I'm really worried and I start crying and shouting for help. I pick him up and start running with him, carrying him in my arms. I run to the doctors with him and he lays him on the bed and starts checking his heart. He shows me his stomach, it's all swollen. The doctor looks worried. Thomas has stopped breathing. He's dead. Throughout all of this, Holly was breathing quickly and shaking. She paused for a few moments and although she was more relaxed, her face was contorted with anguish. Tears ran down her cheeks as she described his funeral and how she put bluebells on his grave, but she didn't want to leave the graveside. She then went on. I'm back in my house now, alone. I'm drinking alcohol in the kitchen. I'm overwhelmed by my grief and I just want to be with him. I feel empty like I want to die. I start taking some tablets. I'm doing it deliberately. I leave my body and I feel the release. I'm walking through the fields of poppies with Thomas holding hands. It feels nice. Holly had obviously passed away in that life and as she was now calm after the rigours of the experience, I brought her gently back to full awareness. She told me that she felt easier inside and surprised at how light she felt. This is actually quite usual after such a session, but I knew that we had more work to do to fully heal the depression. She returned a couple of weeks later, telling me that she had felt much better for a few days after the regression, but then the feelings of woefulness and anxiety had returned. I explained to her that this was normal as we had released some of the pressure from her emotional pressure cooker, and she would naturally feel some freedom for a while, but then the next bit of pressure bubbles up to the top of the pressure cooker, causing the bad feelings. When she was ready, I guided her into trance again, and into the next of the past lives. She began to speak. I'm standing on a cobbled street and it's daytime. I'm a young woman, maybe around 26 years old, and I'm, I'm wearing a long dress and holding some flowers. It's very busy and I'm trying to sell the flowers to passers-by. I think it's Victorian London. I'm very thin and my stomach hurts badly. I go home and go to bed to rest. I don't live in a very nice place. I'm alone, laid in a dirty bed, sweating. I feel very ill. As she relived this, Holly was holding her stomach and her legs were shaking. After a short pause, she went on. I get better and I'm back selling flowers on the street, but after a while the stomach pains come back. I'm crouched down, holding my stomach. I feel scared. I go up some steps to a big house and I'm knocking on the door. An old man opens the door. I think he's a doctor. I hope he can give me some tablets or something. The pain's really bad. But I don't feel comfortable with him either. It's as if he's a bit dodgy. My legs feel stiff and they're aching. She started to breathe rapidly and her legs and arms started to shake violently. Her head moved from side to side as if trying to get away from something and her voice was close to a shout. I sit in a chair but I don't feel safe. I feel scared. He's struggling with me. I'm on the floor. I don't like this. He's raping me. I struggle but can't get away. I'm too weak. I keep looking at a teacup on the table and then I see a knife. I think he's cut my throat. There's blood on my hands. He stabs me in the stomach and as I'm dying, he kisses me on the head. He's dragging my body out now. It's over. As she said this, Holly began to relax again. And when I asked her how she felt, she told me that she was at ease and peaceful. Just before we left that lifetime, she got a strong sense that the man who had killed her in the past lifetime was her ex-husband in this lifetime. This didn't surprise me because in her first session she had told me that her ex-husband had been very difficult to live with and had caused a lot of problems for her once she had left him. I gave Holly a couple of minutes to regain her composure and once she had relaxed more deeply she moved into another past lifetime. This time her voice was faster and staccato. 
I can feel tightness in my stomach and I can't breathe. I'm in a village in a desert running from something. There are shacks which are made from some sort of material and they're burning. I see a man on a chariot going really fast. I'm panicking. I'm looking for someone. There's an attack and fighting all around me. I'm trying to find a woman and a baby. I find them but they're dead. I feel very angry. I'm angry with myself for letting them down and angry with the people who have done this. Suddenly she held her stomach and her head bent forward as her body jerked uncontrollably. Her breathing was rapid and she spoke. They've got me. I'm tied up and they're dragging me along by the feet from the back of a chariot. It's a relief to know that I'm going to die as I'm disappointed with myself that I didn't save my family. She stopped speaking for a couple of minutes as she experienced the death in her life, during which her body continued to jerk and shake until finally she relaxed again as she left the life and moved into spirit. Once more Holly came out of trance feeling a sense of relief, a feeling which again stayed with her for some time after the session. Although she still experienced some days in which she felt down and sometimes angry for no reason. She came back again and her final past lives were just as powerful as the earlier ones. Although they were over quicker and had less narrative content in them. In one of them she was a young boy hiding in a forest at night trying not to get caught by someone. She was very scared throughout this experience which ended with her dying once she was found and punished. In another past life she was a woman who was murdered by her lover whom she felt had been around her in this lifetime in the form of an ex-boyfriend, again another man with whom she'd have a difficult relationship. The final two lives that we worked through also contained traumatic deaths. In the first one she started to feel very frightened as she began to access the life and then the images came into her mind. I'm a woman, in prison, I'm looking out through the bars waiting for something. Someone's coming with the keys and he's leading me out. I'm wearing really nice clothes so I think I'm well to do. I'm led into a courtyard in a village, there are lots of people there looking at me. She started to shake violently. I'm really scared, they're putting a rope around my neck. I can see my children in the crowd watching with everybody else. I don't want to leave my children. I haven't done anything really bad. They say that I'm a witch. I can't believe it's happening. I'm begging them not to do it. I'm hung from a big wooden gallows. Holly continued to shake for a minute or so before she relaxed, a sign that that life was over. I asked her to move then into the next and the last past life. Quite soon she was breathing quickly and her whole body shaking vigorously. I'm in a battle. There are loads of horses and lots of fighting with swords. It's chaotic. There are men falling off horses and being trampled. I'm a man in the middle of it all on a horse. I'm out of breath and my throat hurts and I'm terrified. I have to get away. I'm riding very fast off the battlefield. I get to the top of some cliffs and can't get any further. There's no other way to go. I don't know what to do. I'm alone, I'm scared, out of breath, and the horse is just going round and round at the top of the cliffs. I think we've been defeated and they're chasing me. I feel guilty because I should have stayed and fought. I've been a coward and let everyone down. Suddenly she started to moan and her body twisted in the chair so that she lay in an awkward position. Her voice was softer as she spoke through a clenched jaw. I'm going down, it's a long way. Not on the horse. I'm laid at the bottom of the cliffs. The horse threw me off and then fell on me. My eyes are open but I'm not moving. It's all peaceful now. Holly's shaking eased and she sighed deeply and relaxed. Her final past life experience was over and she came out of trance surprised and at ease. She called me a few weeks later to tell me how well she was feeling. The depression had gone and she felt much happier in herself. She said that she was now able to live a normal life, feeling freer inside than she'd ever felt in her life before. And I've bumped into her once or twice over the years since then. I can confirm that she is still doing really well without a trace of depression to put her down.